But quite honestly, I'm not a guy who's afraid of a challenge. I'm into this thing on my own. It's a grassroots campaign. I'm not getting a lot of hard, you know, support from lobbyists or corporations or the state central party. You know, it's really just a grassroots campaign, step by step. We've had almost 5,000 people do donate to the campaign, but these are $50, $100 donations, not big donations. It's really, I think, a populist, people's grassroots campaign. I think that keeps me honest, and I go down there, and I'm only beholden to the people that sent me there, and those are uh, the folks that are there. And I'd also say, you know, in terms of the Democrats, I'm as frustrated with the Democrats as you are. My problem is the Democrats aren't talking clearly about who we are, what we believe, and be clear about that. I mean, I think we should make it clear that when it comes to um, the war in Iraq, we start bringing our troops home now. They're fueling the insurgency. We got our brave troops stuck in the middle of a bloody civil war, and uh, I think that's the responsible for this position that will get the Iraq, will get the Sunnis and the Shias back to the bargaining table and allow them to find a political solution. I think the Democrats should stand up tall for universal health care. I think it's a basic right for all Americans. And um, that's the big thing. I can tell you, as a business guy, it's something that will bring together, I think I can bring people together, because the high cost of health care is not only crushing the people that have to pay for their own insurance, but it's also crushing small business. And we've got to get the federal government involved, and we've got to find a way to broaden the base so that everybody's included, and we reduce the cost to uh, small business and to individuals. And I don't think our government is doing anything about that. I haven't heard Senator Lieber been talk about it in 18 years. We can talk about energy independence and conservation. We can talk about education and preschool for every four-year-old in this country because that's the best investment we can make in our kids and our future. But to your broader question, I think the Democrats have got to talk about big issues again and not be defensive about where we stand. Talking about uh, issues, uh, two, I'd like you to comment about two emotional issues. One, women's right to choose, and the uh, Israeli Hamas Palestinian situation. Uh, first question on, on the right to choose. I just think we have a federal government that is intruding into our private lives in ways the founding fathers never anticipated. You know, be it a Terry Schiavo, or wiretaps, or stem cell research, and now with Judge Alito on the Supreme Court, he fundamentally jeopardizes a woman's right to choose. You look at the bill coming out of South Dakota, are you familiar with this law? The right one is way to the Supreme Court, next 12 months, 18 months, outlawing the woman's right to choose, even in the case of rape and incest. If uh, I had been in the U.S. Senate, I would have led the charge in opposition to Judge Alito. I think he fundamentally tilts the Supreme Court. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me answer the question, though, which is as regards to Israel and Hamas and the position of the United States of America. Look, I'm, um, I take a backseat to nobody when it comes to my commitment to Israel's security. Uh, I can understand why we're not... Um, providing any funding to Hamas. I think it's a, um, an organization which even, you know, most recently seems to have not only uh, not abandoned its uh, evil rhetoric, but in many cases is trying to put the militia, you know, back as part of the Hamas-led government. I think that's a fundamental threat to uh, Israel, and I can understand our, our country's position on that. I also believe that there's no way that you can starve the Palestinians into submission. I believe that as a, our country, and I'm working with Western Europe, we are going to have to provide humanitarian assistance through third-party organizations to make sure that people are fed in Gaza and the West Bank. And we can hope, hope that we can still start the negotiations again and work towards a peaceful resolution there. So no way to Hamas, which is what your question was, but humanitarian assistance, and hopefully we can uh, take some of the uh, edge off of what seems to be spiraling again in a negative direction. And there's so much that's not working today in this country. But there is a topic that's heating up right now, and that's Iran. It's a very serious situation. It could lead to the Third World War. And I'm just wondering where you stand on that. Uh, Iran, that's a very... I mean, that is probably the most important foreign policy um, military issue we've got on our table right now. All right, so one of the reasons, many reasons that I... Um, 
Bill Strzok's telling me that the war in Iraq is bad for this country and bad for the Iraqis, is that um, we went in there by ourselves, without allies. We thumbed our nose at the United Nations. We said we don't need any help from our Arab neighbors. We don't need help from Western Europe and Russia. You know, frankly, it was the opposite of what George Herbert Walker Bush did. When he went in um, back in 91, and uh, there he did it in a very appropriate and thoughtful way. But the reason I say that is because when it comes to Iran, I know there's a lot of saber rattling going on, and I know there's a lot of talk about nuclear strikes. You know, all terrible ideas that make the situation worse, feed Iran's paranoia, make them feel like I better get the bomb even sooner because I see North Korea is doing okay with the bomb, and I see what happens to Iraq. What I think, I think we ought to do is uh, work with our allies, work with Russia, work with India, and work with Western Europe, and try to put together and open the dialogue with Iran. Start to put together a grand bargain with them. See, find a way that we can engage them back into a, a world using carrots as well as sticks. I mean, they are desperate to sell natural gas and oil to Western Europe. They very much want to build a natural gas pipeline to India. There are reasons that they want to be part of the family of nations. We ought to give them that opportunity to do that. But I'm not pie in the sky. It's tough. I've heard... Um, Akhmaninejad's comments, I know what he said about Israel and pushing them into the sea, but you negotiate with your enemies, and I think we have time, they're not going to have the bomb for five to ten years, and I think working with our allies, working with the United Nations, holding out carrots as well as sticks, we're going to defuse uh, Iran the same way that, um, you know, Qaddafi was defused after a lot of quiet diplomacy in Libya a few years back.